even as an adult like you, it, it's, I recognized I need to process all of this stuff that I am carrying around like baggage. And I even wrote an article about feeling like a piece of garbage, like my metaphor, my image of myself was I was a piece of garbage. I identified with being that foster youth, being separated from my birth family, but nobody told me the reason. And then seeing, then being separated from them, then going to another family, then going into another family and going, well, I'm just a piece of garbage. And that's how I'm going to see myself until someone else shows me how to see myself differently. And that's what a therapist does. Right. You need somebody outside of you who can see you for who you are, not what your behavior is or what happened to you. It's who you are as a person so you can separate out, okay, this is what happened to me. This isn't what's wrong about me. This is about what happened to me and how right. it's impacted me my whole life. And we can't run away. And I ran, I did, even during therapy, I was processing, but there were times, as I'm sure you can relate, where right. I did run and did try to escape because it does feel so much. It mm -hmm. feels overwhelming and we can only handle so much at a time. Right. We're not computers. We can't just recalibrate and go, oh, okay, I had just in my session. Okay, back to normal. It's like, okay, we get vulnerable. Now we know what we are feeling and thinking, and then we have to put our skills in every day. And sometimes we do it well, and sometimes we don't. And right. <laughs> we have our days, and it's staying compassionate with ourselves. Because it's right. oh, hard. Big. That's hard. big. That is huge. Staying compassionate with ourselves. That's big. So let me just say, um, here's, an, here's an example. I, I spoke earlier about me working for the Department of Corrections, and I, I brought that up because, number one, we talked about being on the schedule. One of the biggest tools that we use or, or what they use in corrections is time frames, uh, schedules. Mm -hmm. um, now, a young man coming into a system who's been running buck wild, doing everything that he's wanted, He's difficult his first 30 days. But once we put this person on a schedule, mm -hmm. and there's a process of going on the schedule. There's a three-day um, interview period. They don't just bring you in and throw you out there. You know, you got to go through all these medical testing, your psychological testing, your physical, and all these kind of things. And then we sort of slowly integrate you into the program. And even after those th three days, it's tough for a young man or a woman who's been roaming the streets day and night, pretty much doing everything that they wanted to do. And then you're brought into this environment and it's tough for you to calm yourself down. But probably after the first 30 days, these young men and women, they start to, co to calm down because we are structure based. We do the same thing every day and doing the same thing every day gives those people who feel out of control a sense of control. Mm -hmm. So structuring and, and planning, like we talked about earlier, is so important. And then the other point I wanted to make was on the subject that we were just talking about. Yeah. Um, there was a young counselor and there was a young girl and they were having a conversation and he was, he told her, you need to change. And she said, change? This is all I know. Mm -hmm. This is all I know. Mm. So to me, now she put it back on the counselor. What can you show me? What are the differences that you can show me that would make me a better person? Show me what change looks like. Mm. Yeah. You know, so as you said, we as uh, therapists and counselors, and uh, advocates, um, I always say uh, we don't change people, but we give them the resources to change. We give them the coping skills. We give them all these um, ideas of what change looks like, but it's up to them to embrace the things that we're offering, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, um, you know, to provide a uh, sense of direction. You know, 
And um, it's not an easy job, you know, no, um, because you have years and years of conditioning response and you have to change those conditions within the brain, you know, and yeah. it takes a long time, some longer than others, you know, we're all specific in our needs, our wants and our growth, you know, we, we always have to keep that in mind. Not everybody's on the same timeline for change. Right, right, right. And I think, you know, you and I are sitting here together by no mistake because we come from the system. We know what it's like to feel so disoriented, separate from our families, our tribes, our people, and then not knowing what's going to happen next. And, I, and for us to be showing our vulnerability here, showing up and telling other foster youth alumni or even teens in foster care right now that, listen, it's going to be hard, but trust us. This is going to change the way you see yourself. You'll see things differently. You'll live a different life. And we do have determination to do it you can tap into this part of yourself, which is your inner resource, your inner strength. And, and I even comprised a list of seven strengths of foster youth. We are driven. When we commit to something and we believe in something and we feel inspired to do something, we can start and begin to act. And I think that that's what this conversation is about. It's about inspiring youth to know and give them hope. There is another way. You don't have to get stuck in this. Will I be like my parents or my family or turn out like them? Actually, you will not. You do have a new path. There is another way. And I always say change is hard. And it's like this, it's a whirlpool. So think of, you know, when everybody's in a pool and everybody's going in one direction and everybody like really goes and making that whirlpool. And then everybody goes, okay, let's go in a new direction, right? And everybody goes, right. turn around. Yeah. When you first go in that direction, it is tough. And you got to keep, and I always say, you got to keep putting in your skills, putting in your skills, pushing effort, effort, effort. And over time, you will go into a new direction. Right. And you and I are not sitting here saying, oh, you know, it was easy. No, we know how hard that whirlpool is and how every day you do a little bit at a time, you'll get there. We will cope with it for the rest of our lives. But exactly. the key is the key is cope. So just reacting on getting our feelings heard or reacting to situations without having coping skills to assess, breathe, and, you know, uh, process um, what's in front of us so that we make better decisions. But my example is kind of like a washing machine that goes back and forth to clean the clothes. We're trying to get the spin cycle so we can go in one direction. <laughs> you know, we're trying to get the spin cycle. So um, I'll just say that um, I, I think that each and every uh, foster youth or kid in an unfortunate situation, I think that, like me, I think that they know and they see. And for me, I knew and I saw other families and I saw other kids and I saw other situations. And I was like, I want to be like that. Mm -hmm. how, how, can, how can I be like that? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, I don't know if you know, but when I was young, there was a show called The Courtship of Eddie's Father. Mm -mm. And it was Bill Bixby, the actor. Uh -huh. He was the father, and he had a young son. Mm -hmm. And they had a housekeeper. I think the mom passed away or something like that. But the guy was the father to the son. And I would watch this show, and it would bring tears to my eyes. Because, number one, I didn't have my father mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. And this show kind of set the tone for me as a young kid in terms of how I wanted my life to be. Mm -hmm. So I, for some reason, I was just so um, um, attracted or just so curious and, and into this show 
because I knew what my situation was Mm -hmm. and I knew what my situation, what I want my situation to be. And this looked like what I wanted my situation to be. So I say that to say this, we all have it in our heads about how we want our life to be. Okay. Mm -hmm. And at that point, now we need to start asking for help. We need to start verbalizing those thoughts and telling people that come into our life that we know are trying to help us. You know, we need help. Right. I right. want something we do. different. We do. We, I, we I feel help. something different. And I'm, I'm going to give you an example. A young girl, I was doing a presentation at a junior high school mm-hmm. uh, probably six years ago. And I did this long presentation. I showed this video. And this one young girl came up to me after the video and she goes, sir, she goes, I get everything you're saying, but I don't know what to do. And I said, yes, you do, because number one, you're in school today, and that's exactly where you're supposed to be, so this is the perfect start. So then I went to her counselor, and I told her counselor to give me a history on her, and uh, she was failing school, she was in gangs, and she was doing drugs, and I called the counselor, I said, well, can you call her mom and ask her, does she know what her situation is? Well, the mom said, no, she didn't know all these things, but we knew, you know, either she didn't know or she didn't care. So I called the mom and I said, hi, and this is who I am. Um, If you don't mind, I'd like to intervene and I'd like to mentor your daughter. And um, I needed to have a conversation with you and the school and so everybody would be on the same page. I need your telephone number. I need, and here's my telephone number. And I think, you know, we can all work on this situation. And um, uh, it wasn't easy in the beginning, you know, Mm -hmm. but uh, it turned out to be great. As a matter of fact, this young lady uh, is now 22 and she is now uh, employed with uh, L.A. County as a receptionist after graduating from high school at 19. And now she's uh, going to be employed with L.A. County as a receptionist. So um, that situation right there is a perfect example of somebody knowing that they needed something and having the courage to step out and say, help. Yes. I need something. Yes. There are people out there yes. like myself, like Jeanette, who, who will help you, but you have to step out. You have to be an advocate for yourself and ask and be specific about what you need. 